Well, I first got serious about music, actually, when I was about 11 or 12 years old, and it was primarily electronic music. So because, I suppose it's a cliche, really, but because I was interested in astronomy, and then I got interested in physics, I got interested in synthesizers <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and the, the technology of music. I, I'd always been interested in astronomy, and uh, Carl Sagan's Cosmos was broadcast in I think it was 1979 or 1980, so I was 11 or 12. And it was the perfect time because, and to this day, I think Cosmos is one of, if not, if not the greatest science documentary series because, and this is the thing that really connected with me, it, it's not just about astronomy or the exploration of the planets or the wider universe. It's also about what that, exploration means for us, for our civilization. And that's always stayed with me. And that's actually a central part of the show here at Sydney Opera House, because the, to me, um, cosmology and astronomy raise profound questions that we have as a civilization been trying to answer for centuries, right? if not millennia. And they're questions about our existence. It's, I, I start the show by saying, um, what does it mean to live a finite, fragile life in an infinite, eternal universe? Which I, I so often joke is the only interesting question in philosophy. I don't really mean that. So if any philosophers are listening, I, <laughs> it's kind of a joke. But if you think about it, it probably is the question which resonates through the history of philosophy. What does it mean? We're, and the interesting thing about, for me, about astronomy and cosmology is it frames that question. Um, it places that question in the arena of reality, if you like. It tells us that we are one planet around one star amongst 400 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy, which is itself one of two trillion galaxies in the observable universe, which is itself a small patch of what exists. And, and, and as I'll discuss in the show, maybe even the, the, our universe itself, which goes way beyond the horizon, um, might be one of a potentially infinite number of universes. So we, we are definitely small, right? There's no doubt about that. But the question is, and this is the question that we address head on in the show with, with music and philosophy and art and science, the, the, the question is, does that mean that we are insignificant? And um, I, I won't give away the answer. But you might guess it's not going to be yes, because it's me. I, I, there's an element of the old rock and roll kind of um, person in me. So, so I wanted as much LED as the, the roof here could hold. So, so I've gone sort of stadium, stadium rock with the LED screens. It's like, how much is your weight limit? Because that, that's basically it. So when you come to see the show, that's as much LED as you can hang without breaking it. A symphony orchestra playing one of these great pieces of music is, is, is a, it's an enormously complex organism. I, I want to know how many bits of information there are in the performance of a symphony. So, so and, and, and you could argue it's almost unquantifiable because it's the mood of the musicians and the intention of the composer and the, 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 the arena, you know, and the audience. It's, every, it's a live performance, a very complex thing. Marla Five, you know, what's the information content of that? Mm. Is it, oh, you can quantify if it's the score. Not very much is the answer. Yeah. You know. You fit it easily on a, the most ancient of USB sticks. But is that what that symphony is? <laughs> right? I, I would argue not. Right? There, there are people who know a lot more about classical music than I do who will be shouting at their screen <laughs> now with a strong opinion. Yeah. What is it? Are you trying to get to the, what, the, what the composer intended? Are you trying to produce something else? <laughs> 